How's everyone doing? Today I have another random bag of movies and goodies. Uh, and you guys seem to like these videos and they're fun to do. They're kind of a spur of the moment thing. Uh, here's the thumbnail face right there. <laughs> As you can see, tons of uh, goodies in here. Uh, I've mentioned this every time I do these videos, my mom is getting ready to sell her place and I've pretty much used my old room in there for storage for years. Uh, so I, you know, got some stuff from out from over there and bringing it over here now, um, you know, got to move everything out of there uh, little by little. Uh, I didn't realize how much stuff I still have over there. I have tons of stuff. Uh, I still have a lot of DVDs over there. I don't have many Blu-rays uh, Blu left. I have, uh, in this pile, I do have, I've got one single, single Blu-ray, but then the rest are DVDs and uh, some comic books in here and other random stuff. Um, let me know if you've seen the movies in here, what you think of them, what your favorite item from uh, this random bag video is. But uh, let's go ahead and get into it. First off, I will show you the lone Blu-ray, Varsity Blues. Uh, let me know what your favorite uh, football movie is or favorite high school movie too. Uh, this is a classic to me. Uh, I like the cast a lot. Uh, James Vanderbeek, John Voight, Paul Walker, Amy Smart, Allie Larder. Um, there's a lot of other recognizable people in here too. Uh, definitely a classic for me. One thing I'm bummed about though, I just noticed there's like a, uh, like a little indentation hole right there in the back. That's a bummer. That's going to bother me. I kind of almost want to rebuy this now. Um, I, I know it doesn't affect the movie, but I don't know. I, I mean, you probably can't even notice it. I notice it though. I'm OCD like that. So I might have to get a new one of this. I think these are still in print and relatively inexpensive, but, uh, Definitely glad to have that back in the collection so I can, I plan to watch that one now, probably uh, in a couple days or so. Uh, next up is The Simpsons. I have a bunch of these sets. I have shown them before in the past. This is the complete sixth season with the, the Homer face. Uh, this one wasn't too obtrusive. Like some of the other ones, uh, the face sticks out more. They have like the nose sticking out. I like the design for it, but then I also don't like it as well because it's kind of hard to sit on the shelves because it's really thick. And then the other ones where the nose and the eyes pop out. Uh, it takes up a lot of room. They usually also have the, like, the standard DVD case editions as well. I think these look cooler, but they're just not as practical. Uh, let me know who your favorite character from uh, who your favorite character from The Simpson is, uh, Simpsons is as well. But I remember watching them way back in the day of the Tracy Ullman show. I think is when uh, it first came out. Um, so I think it's still just as funny now. Um, I do like Futurama a little bit more. And let's take the rest of these out. And. Next up is a Three Stooges box set. This is the ultimate collection right here. It does have a little rip right there on the top, which I remember getting it like that. Uh, kind of a bummer, but uh, it has a little of embossing right there too, raised up. Um, Three Stooges, they have the cartoon, they have uh, all kinds of stuff, but here you go right there, all in there like that. And I don't think I've ever... <laughs> Uh, I think I just had this in storage for years, so I don't think I even uh, checked these ones out. Uh, this one right here is the Rare Treasures one right here. It's a three-disc set right there with a whole bunch of other ones. Like, oh, they got some of the cartoon ones in there, too. That looks pretty cool. Looking forward to checking that one out. There was another animated set, which I wasn't a huge fan of the animated one. But this one is like an old-school-looking one right there, uh, even more so than the ones that they had for the animated series. I, I don't know. Not too familiar. Again, this is one of those Lost Treasure ones. So I don't remember seeing that one, but uh, looking forward to that, checking that out. And let me know who your favorite uh, Stooge is. Uh, and then the rest are like that. Uh, these are still sealed up and everything too, so I'm going to definitely uh, dive into them. So pretty cool to uh, have this back in the, the collection and finally give it the proper love that it deserves. I wish this little part right, right here wasn't ripped, but I think I saw this on a few of these editions for whatever reason. Top flap. But uh, still pretty cool looking. Again, I like the display uh, part right there, the front with the embossing. So that's a nice heavy set. And I know some of the other, like the old uh, animated set that I had was like out of print and going for like crazy money. I don't know if that is or not. I haven't checked anything like that. Uh, this is a, I think, yeah, this is a Mill Creek set right here. The giant 600 cartoon collection. These were always, you know, cheapies. And uh, you got to see some cool old school cartoons in here. So I didn't love the packaging. It's still, you know, it's like almost like those computer disc ones right there in the sleeves like that. But, uh, you know, for the price point, you can't be too picky. You have Betty Boop, uh, Casper Friendly Ghost, Baby Huey, uh, Woody Woodpecker, uh, tons of uh, Fig's Cat. Yeah, just all kinds of Three Stooges down there too. Popeye, Mighty Mouse, 
So I like the old school cartoons like that way better than the cartoons that are out now. I remember Saturday morning cartoons. That was like an event you'd get up early with a bowl of cereal, a couple bowls of cereal, and watch Saturday morning cartoons. What do kids watch this in the mornings now? And then uh, you know, let me know what your favorite Saturday morning cartoon was. And I remember on TGIF for Friday for family viewing. What do kids watch now on Fridays? It's I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> But I missed those times. But uh, next up is some DVDs, uh, The Legend of Bagger Vance. I don't know if I fully saw this movie. I think I only saw parts of it. I never saw the full thing of it, so now I can fully uh, rewatch it. Or watch it in its entirety, actually. Because again, I saw clips, but never the, the full thing. Uh, good cast there, too. Matt Damon, Will Smith, and uh, Charlize Theron. And next up is Mother Jugs and Speed, which I don't think I saw this one. Uh, I think I got it from Blockbuster and I never popped it in. Harvey Keitel, Rick, uh, Raquel Welch, Bill Cosby. It's a shame about Bill Cosby going to jail too. Uh, the Cosby Show, I remember watching that all the time as a kid. And he basically kind of ruined it for uh, everybody in the cast. They were getting, you know, uh, the residuals and stuff. And now that they, they pulled it off the air, a lot of those people are, aren't getting those paychecks. One person could ruin it for hundreds to thousands of people depending on a TV or movie. And I know one of the guys, I can't remember his uh, character name, but he was married to one of the daughters on the show. He was actually working in New Jersey at like a Trader Joe's and like somebody took a picture or video and posted it. Uh, he was like a cashier at Trader Joe's in New Jersey. And uh, I guess now uh, Tyler Perry is going to cast him in something and help him out. Uh, so that's kind of cool to see. But uh, yeah, looking forward to checking this one out. I remember Leonard Six was a crazy one that uh, Bill Cosby was into. I still like the Bill Cosby, the TV show back in the day. I mean, I have fond memories of it. Uh, I guess you just have to kind of block out what he did. And, you know, Roman Polanski somehow gets a pass to a lot of people. Uh, Woody Allen. There's a lot of uh, Victor Salva for Jeepers Creepers. I love Jeepers Creepers. hate the person, what he did. I feel like that's unforgivable. I don't care that he went to jail for it. It's just something that I think uh, certain things like that, the Michael Vick thing, to me, you don't get a pass for it. You're done for life. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I, again, I really like Jeepers Creepers. I, I was a fan of the movie before I found out about the director. Um, so kind of hard to separate sometimes. But uh, next up is Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag with Joe Pesci. This one was, out, I think, out of print for a while, but now it has a Blu-ray release. So I'll probably be getting rid of this one. I remember this being cheesy fun. I, I remember he's like a hitman and the guy mistakenly gets the bag and there's all kinds of hijinks in here. Um, yeah, David Spade's in here. A few other recognizable people. Um, Christy Swanson. Yeah, big fan of her. <laughs> I remember there's a movie with her and Charlie Sheen. Can't remember the name of it right now, ah, but that was a good one too. I feel like that deserves a Blu-ray release. But eight hits in the duffel bag. I remember being cheesy fun. If anybody wants to do a trade for this one, let me know. Uh, Rebel music, Bob Marley story right there. Uh, this has previously uh, unheard recordings. Hoarding up <laughs> popped into my mind. I got this is what I feel like with all these uh, bags of stuff right there. Uh, and then new footage, uh, live performances, and many of his classic hits. So I like the unheard recordings aspect. I'm going to look forward to checking that out. And early glimpses of his life and family with uh, early years in Trenchtown. Includes interviews with his wife and uh, Scratch Perry and original members of the Whalers. Looks like it's going to be a pretty good uh, music documentary. So pretty awesome. One of the most well-known popular musicians of all time. And uh, it's sad, uh, I remember there was like a trivia question, I think it was like Trivial Pursuit. Uh, he had cancer and everything, I guess he'd lost his hair. He was buried with a, a wig of uh, dreadlocks. Um, interesting factoid. And here is, uh, I remember this is, I probably, I don't know, I'm probably just gonna chuck this. It's got all like deterioration right there, pitting and stuff. This was like a, uh, a region 2 dvd i bought it on ebay and i asked the person because they didn't have the region coding on there this was like way back in the day probably like eight years ago or something i asked the person selling it if um you know if it was region one compatible and they said yes maybe they didn't understand because it did come from another country i think it might have been i don't know if it was brazil or something like that i can't remember right now but it was another country and of course it was region two uh and it was all beat up too they didn't it was they said it was brand new it it didn't have the sticker and the picture and there's like residue right there and then the pitting and then if I could open this thing up that would be great uh, you can see it was like a formal rental too it is cool looking I like the inside part right there I'm actually not that big of a fan of this movie um, I think I at the time I might have uh, got this before I saw the movie and then uh, I went through eBay and PayPal the guy was kind of a jerk and uh, basically to get my refund I would have had to send this back and the shipping cost would have been ridiculous, so I didn't go ahead and do it. I just ended up keeping it and eating it, but uh, I don't know. I'm probably just going to chuck this. I don't know if anybody wants to, 
it's all beat up but uh, it does kind of look cool though it kind of actually works for uh, the look of the film too but i do like that shot right there that's a pretty cool shot but uh probably just gonna get rid of that one had that one for a while kind of forgot i even had that still this <laughs> i had a whole bunch of vhs tapes um i don't know why i even had this one i guess it was from when i was a kid but uh i don't really remember like watching this even as a kid like i remember watching uh winnie the pooh care bear stuff like that but i don't really remember watching uh thomas the Tr uh, best of thomas the train right there collector's edition thomas and friends yeah nah. <laughs> uh and then here are a couple really cool sets but i think i'm gonna get rid of them actually uh, so if anybody's interested in doing trades for these sets 100 great horror classics 100 movies on uh, 24 disc set uh there's two separate ones and just a ton of ones right there and they're from mill creek again i love these um uh, these releases and stuff but they're just they're true I, I don't have any room um and i think a lot of these were public domain i'm not 100 percent sure um but i just they're they're big obtrusive sets and i just i just don't have the room um but yeah if anybody wants to do a trade for them let me know i'll go ahead and show you what the interior looks like they usually have um yeah like the sleeves like that you can see that oh, oh all right let me make sure i don't knock these all out but there you go the discs are in there like that uh, again it's they were budget buys um but they're uh pretty awesome sets as far as what they contain movie wise it's just uh, you know I've, I've i have a bunch of these sets already and i don't know i've got to cut down on them so there's that one the horror 100 uh, classics next up is the sci-fi one of it same one uh 100 great greatest sci-fi classics right there featuring Vincent Price and you know the other one had uh Hitchcock and all kinds of Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff Vincent Price in here too well, a whole bunch of classics Ben Kingsley James Earl Jones Bill Paxton and I'll go ahead and show you what the uh the sets are again I like these sets but I just I don't know I feel like a lot of these are public domain and I, don't, I just I don't have the room I have uh, you see the two bookcases behind me I've got nine total Ikea bookcases that are six and a half feet tall each all filled up uh, and there's just piles all over the floor so unfortunately I don't think I'm gonna keep that those sets right there yeah so let me know if you want to do trades for that and then next up is this set which I think I'm gonna let go too I thought it was really cool it's a uh, Japanese set for the matrix collector's box set it's huge um, you can see it's gigantic compared to the blu-ray right there so uh but i like these sets i know there was uh, american versions of these too but uh, this one right here just it looked cool to me as silver instead of the black and it's really glossy nice finish um japanese set i believe is uh it, i think it says region one or maybe it's region three i don't i can't tell there's a one and a three over here i don't it's hard for me to imagine this would actually be uh region one playable but I think I just got it for collecting purposes, but uh, take this wraparound piece off and I'll show you the contents inside. Comes out like that, a nice sturdy outer slip case. And I love the, the glossy look to that as well. It's got the film cell in here, which I never opened up. This is still sealed up and it's matted and there it is right there, limited edition. I don't know what this was limited to, but, uh, and then there's some like picture prints in here, some shots, there's a few different ones in here. And then you get, um, there's a poster, some of the little advertisements in Japanese. Yeah, there's a big poster right here of the film. I'm not gonna unfold it, but you know what the Matrix poster looks like. It it's, looks like it's a, you know, I don't know, 27 by 40 kind of one. And then you have this book right here, Screenplay. Oh, that's pretty cool. By the Wachowskis, who are both now transgender women, which is uh, interesting. I know the one came out first, and then uh, now the other one is too. I think they both had the, the surgeries and stuff, gender reassignment. This was such a huge, just genre-defining film. And then you have the DVD like that. Yeah, it says Region 2, actually. It's funny, because on the other one, it's at 1 and 3 in the back. But yeah, it looks like the Region 2 release. And I do like that, like, kind of like almost a hollow foil when it catches the lights for that too. And then that's it in there. But a uh, pretty cool box set. Again, I got it uh, because I was, during that time period, I was really into all the collector sets. And I don't think I ever did an unboxing video for this. I wanted to, but you know, life. Got busy, work, uh, social life, and 
watching movies and doing videos and stuff for other stuff. I just, during that time I was going wild with uh, collecting, so pretty cool. If anybody's interested in doing a trade for this, let me know. I, I'm pretty sure I overpaid for it. Back in the day, you know, those sets were pricey. Uh, now I feel like um, it was, I guess that's how much, was it yen right there it was initially? But I mean, I, I paid more because it was an import. It is cool looking, but I don't know. I just feel like I don't have the room. I have so many, I'm like, and especially over there, there's so many additions I still have to get. There's the wraparound piece, but um, put this off to the side. So yeah, if anybody's interested in doing a trade, let me know or wants to buy it too. That works. Uh, I don't know. Make me an offer if you are interested. Uh, next up, what do I got down here in this bag? Oh, I got some, uh, some baseball cards. I'll go ahead and show you that. Um, way back in the day, my old channel, I used to have a lot of baseball card videos and sports card videos, basketball, football. Uh, but here's some signed SP legendary cuts. Uh, Bill Mazeroski, limited to uh, 199 If anybody wants to do trades for, actually, I would like to sell these personally. Um, I don't know, I'm cutting down on my memorabilia stuff too. We've got a uh, Jim Palmer autograph right there out of uh, 199 and I, I'm not sure, was this 2000? Yeah, 2000 SP Legendary Cuts. I remember I was uh, really big into this set. Um, Andre Dawson, one of my all-time favorite players. Um, Ryan Sandberg, too. The Hawk and uh, Ryan right there. And this is out of 199. Cubs are my favorite team. But uh, I think I'm going to let it go because I just, I have a bunch of memorabilia. And there's Fergie Jenkins, too. Out of uh, 125 on that one. And then here's a cool one, actually. Ernie Banks, a uh, legendary memorabilia piece of his uh, jersey right there out of uh, 75. I think I'll probably let that go, too, even though I think that's really cool, Mr. Cub. And then here's another piece of Ron Santo. I like that with the stripe. And this is out of 75. And then we got a Greg Maddox, uh, Beckett, 1987 Tops Traded 10 Mint. 10 mint or better. Can it be better than mint? It can be better than 10? I don't know. So yeah, there's the, the Beckett one. If anybody uh, is interested in buying that too, one of the greatest pitchers of all time, let me know. But uh, yeah, uh, diff some stuff I'm just gonna, you know, I used to be big into it. Now my uh, my interests have changed. I'm definitely more focused into movies and stuff like that. But uh, And then here's some comic books that I'll show you too. Big stack of comic books. Bang. <laughs> And I'm going to be doing another comic book for sale video coming up soon. I sold a bunch, including uh, first appearance of Deadpool and the Mutants 98, and I got a good amount for that. But I still have like 500 to 600 comic books. Um, and I just, I'm not, I've kept a stack aside that I'm going to keep. But uh, yeah, again, uh, I was big into comics as a kid now, just not so much. But here's uh, Iron Man number 25 with uh, Namor. I always thought Namor was kind of underrated. But uh, that's a pretty cool old school one right there. Uh, it's got a little bit of, actually, it's in, I mean, decent condition, but it's got a little bit of wear on the, the edges and stuff. Not as bad as I would have thought, but, uh, still very eye-catching and appealing. That's an old one. And then we've got New Mutants, number 51. New Mutants was, like, my favorite, uh, growing up comic book. I really liked X-Force, X-Factor, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, the different, uh, cast that's in, uh, the movies, though. And then here's New Mutants number one. Oh, this is a special edition. There you go. I was going to say, I didn't remember this one looking like this, but this is, uh, I think this is Arthur Adams. I always thought Arthur Adams, his style looked uh, a little bit like Rob Liefeld. I feel like he could have been just as popular as that whole image crew, uh, but his one was a little bit more contained. I don't know why he, I feel like he should have been, but uh, there you go. Really cool looking cover. And speaking of Rob Liefeld, here's some Rob Liefeld uh, issues right here. Uh, New Mutants number 89. Uh, 88s right there with uh, the blob and Cable. Cable was my favorite character growing up as a kid. He was basically a Terminator ripoff, but he was still awesome. Josh Brolin was decent. Um, I don't know. I was expecting, I guess, a little bit more um, badassery, I guess. But uh, here's New Mutants number 96. The Beast. Uh, here's one with Wolverine. New Mutants number 97. That's pretty awesome. This was part of the Extinction Agenda. But pretty cool. And New Mutants number 52. Yeah, I'm pretty sure at one time I had all of the New Mutants issues except for the first appearance of Cable. It was like the only one I was missing. New Mutants number 54. New Mutants 55. Let me know if you read comic books as a kid. And uh, if so, what was your favorite comic book and favorite comic book character? New Mutants number 56. New Mutants 57. 
And then X Factor number 70, part of the Muir Island saga right there, epilogue. This was, um, who's the artist on here? Uh, Mignola did uh, Hellboy and stuff. New Mutants 58. New Mutants 59. New Mutants 53. New Mutants, oh sorry, Uncanny X-Men 262. Forge is also one of my favorite characters. So that's pretty cool to see Forge on there. Uh, New Mutants 44. This one's actually beat up on the spine. Uh, New Mutants 21. Oh, I really like uh, this cover. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. That's old school memories right there. And New Mutants, another special number one. So I had a couple of these ones. I had a couple different... Uh, 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 you know, doubles and stuff. Some of them were uh, what I call reader issues, and other ones I wanted to keep pristine. New Mutants number uh, 95. I remember that one. I had a few of these ones. I probably had like five of these ones. I don't know why. I think there was also a time period where I was just, you know, collecting comics a lot too. And then I liked, um, again, that whole cast of crew of the Image people Liefeld, McFarlane, um, Jim Lee, uh, all those, that whole group, Eric Larson. But uh, New Mutants number 92. New Mutants number 24, New Mutants 41, New Mutants 23 with a cloak and dagger on there. That's pretty awesome. And New Mutants number 6. Oh, that's, that's an awesome cover. Oh, man. I love that. That's friggin' awesome right there. I dig the heck out of that. Uh, New Mutants number 4. Here's some of the old school ones. New Mutants number three. New Mutants number two. New Mutants number one. Bang. And New Mutants number one is from 1982. Holy moly. Old school. <laughs> You know, I wasn't reading them back then. When I was uh, older, I, you know, I got all the back issues and stuff. New Mutants Annual number one. I like that one a lot as well. I think this is Bill Sinkowitz, I think, who did the, the artwork on that. And then New Mutants number 86, which I love that cover with a vulture right there. This is uh, Liefeld and McFarlane. And I like how they put After Ditko, AD. I like that. You can see that. So that's a really cool cover. I always like that one. So there you go. Those are all the comics. Wait, there's there's something else in here at the very end. What do we got here? Oh, wow. Here's a couple things back here. I didn't realize I had these in here. Uh, here's some old school cards. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I definitely am looking to trade these or sell these. Um, I was big into cards. Again, you have the all the different hologram ones and all the different sports card and not sport cards ones. But this one, I remember this set... He's, uh, what was it, uh, Marvel, I don't know what they were called, Marvel Superhero ones, but that's the Ghost Rider hologram one, but I love those ones. There's Jordan, there's Grant Hill, and that's one of the Fleer Metal ones, and here's the uh, the classic collection, the Four Sport, the college ones, where it was one out of 60,000. I remember having a lot of those ones, though, but it was uh, Chris Weber, Alex Rodriguez, Drew Bledsoe, and Alexander Daigle. And then uh, you got Jamal Mashburn down there too. So yeah, I'm definitely looking to, to move those if anybody's interested. And there's these ones. These were the classic ones. I can't remember what, uh, what was the Continuity Comics? Is that what it was called? I can't remember, but they had some cool issues. There's another Alex Rodriguez one, uh, Rookie, some classic, some Jordan. We got uh, Anthony Hardaway. We got another Jordan one, Drew Bledsoe, Jason Kidd, and then Venom versus uh, Demogoblin. So pretty cool stuff, and I got uh, one more right here of these cards. I have a, I used to have a ton. I probably still do over there. Oh, I love these ones. These masterpieces from uh, Fleer Ultra. You got Carnage and Venom, and uh, we got Emotion with Sean Kemp. Oh, look at that Carnage one. Holy moly, it looks awesome. And then we got some uh, Spawn, like some of those big cards right there. They were cool, but I hated the, the how big they were. But then you got a uh, Jason Kidd, Dennis Rodman. In the back, you've got some uh, Lady Death, Onslaught, uh, Superman, and you've got uh, Shaquille O'Neal, Latrell Sprewell, and you've got some more of these um, uh, Fleer Ultra ones, Borges Vallejo, that's awesome right there. And then you got Craven, Scorpion, Black Cat, and you've got a uh, Batman and Wildcat from Wizard right there. 
But these Fleer Ultra ones, these Masterpiece ones are just amazing. Look at those. And look at that, that uh, Carnage one. Friggin' awesome. I got one more thing in here, though. Stay with me, stay with me. I don't know what's in here, actually. Uh, what is in this folder right here? Set this here. Oh, here's some Garbage Pill Kid cards. Some giant ones, some big ones right there. That's pretty cool. Brings back a lot of memories. I was really big into these as a kid. TV Stevie and Wrinkly Randy. And here's an old school reproduction hunting photo of uh, Babe Ruth right there. Who else is in there? Uh, Lou Gehrig. Some other people. And then we've got, uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember which. Is it Todd Collins, I think it is. Quarterback right there. Signed up. 8x10. The Redskins. And then we've got... Uh, uh, oh, from It's a Wonderful Life, um, Carolyn Grimes, she played Zuzu. She used to, used to sell a ton of stuff. I think she used to sell on eBay, and she had, like, a website as well. And I think she even did stuff on, like, other, like, was it Facebook or something? But um, uh, Zuzu's Petals, Zuzu Bailey. It's a Wonderful Life is one of my all-time favorite movies. The quintessential Christmas movie. Very inspirational. Absolutely love it. So very cool to find that again. So there you go. That's all the goodies, you know, movies, Blu-rays, DVDs, box sets, cards comic books all that kind of stuff um again i do want to move some of the stuff so if you're interested in anything definitely let me know as well some of the stuff i'm going to keep but i think i mentioned the ones that i wanted to get rid of uh, let me know if you've seen the movies uh if you collected any cards sports non-sports uh what your favorite comic book was growing up all the stuff that i mentioned um yeah all that good stuff let me know what your favorite item from all this random bag video is leave me a comment down below hope everybody's doing well take care